Using Pascal's triangle to expand binomials. So what we're going to do here is introduce Pascal's triangle. But before we do that, we are going to talk about exactly how this all works. So what we're doing is multiplying out x plus y to a power. Okay? So let's go through a couple of these and see if we can see a pattern. So x plus y to the 0. x plus y is a number. 2 is 0. Anything to the 0 is just 1. So this just gives us 1. x plus y to the first. Anything to the first just stays as it, as it is. So this just gives us x plus y. Okay. x plus y squared. We know this is one of our special formulas, so this is just going to give us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Okay. x plus y to the third. Okay. We have to do a little bit more than, than just remembering this one. We'd actually have to multiply it out. It's just going to be this times another x plus y. It's going to save us the work, and we'll just look at what the answer is, which is just x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3x y squared plus y cubed. If you don't believe me, you can try it out on your own. Okay, so what I want to do now is focus on the coefficients of these terms we have up here. Remembering that whenever there's no coefficient there, there's actually a 1. So we have a 1 and 1, 1 and 1, and 1 and 1 on the end as well. Okay, so I'm going to write these coefficients out in a triangle form. Okay, so coming over here, what we end up having is 1 from the first, 1, 1 for the second, 1, 2, 1 for the third, and 1, 3, 3, 1 for the fourth. Okay, this is what's called Pascal's triangle, and what this does is it just continues, where it's this triangle where each number is formed by adding the two numbers above it. So if we wanted to continue this on, the 1 is just going to continue down the side. The term that goes underneath the 1 and the 3 is the 4. Under the 3 and the 3, add those together, 6, 3 and 1, 4, and a 1 on the end. So this would actually be the coefficients that we would have if we multiplied x plus y to the fourth. Okay. And another thing we want to look at is, we go back over here, the degrees are always adding up to the power that we started with. So for this example here, we have a cubic, a third degree. We start with x to the third, and our x slowly goes down one degree at a time, ending at x is zero, and our y slowly goes up. But even here when we have x squared y, our degrees add up to three. Okay? So, what that tells me here is if I wanted to fill in the blanks to this one, I know that I'm dealing with a fourth degree. So this is going to be x to the fourth. This term is going to be, actually let's rewrite this out outside of the triangle, keep our little triangle clean. This is just going to be x to the fourth. Then we're going to add four. Degree on x goes down one, so this ends up being x to the third. We need it to still add up to four, so this is going to be a y. Going over 1, 6. x degree goes down 1, so we end up with x squared. y degree goes up 1, y squared. Continuing with the pattern, x degree goes down 1, y degree goes up 1. Lastly, finishing with y to the fourth. Okay? We could continue on to do this for x plus y to the fifth, sixth, seventh. We would just need to add on more and more rows. Okay. Obviously, this is a little bit easier to use for smaller powers on x plus y. Once we get to x plus y to the 10th, we're going to be writing a lot of rows. But as long as we're dealing with smaller powers, Pascal's triangle can be a really cool resource to help us out.